Hello guys, in this video I'm going to be building this British Universal Carrier Mark II from Tamiya. The Universal Carrier was also known as the Bren Gun Carrier and over 113,000 of them were built which apparently makes it the most produced armoured fighting vehicle in history and it was used by the British and Commonwealth forces in all theatres of World War II. This Tamiya kit has been released in a few versions over the years this forced reconnaissance version is the latest version, and this was released in 2001. Looking inside the box, we can see we have a couple of sprues here which have figures in desert uniform. These are from the earlier versions of this kit, but they've been included anyway. So I'm not going to use these figures, but they will be useful for the spare parts box. And then we have this light grey sprue here of some more figures and these are wearing the battle dress for the European theatre. This is obviously quite a small kit, but it isn't quite as easy to build as its size might suggest, especially when it comes to the build sequence and painting. You can see here it builds up from the base. There are some ejector pin marks there but they all get covered up by future pieces. And then one distinctive feature of the Brenkun carrier is this central divider which presumably is the engine cover. And you can see as the mid, the rear and the side pieces slot together that the engine cover goes in between them. The fit there is very good but I did decide to leave the engine cover out until later on in the painting process so that I could easily get paint on the floor of that rear compartment and also on the inside there of the engine cover where it will be visible slightly. As you can see there's a nice level of detail both inside and outside the vehicle. There are a few stowage items like this basket and a big canvas tarp which I left off for separate painting. And although there were some ejector pin marks on the interior, in general they were covered up by future components. The front compartment is where you need to plan carefully before you paint. As you can see here, the driver figure has to go in before this front panel goes on. But of course, once you put the driver figure in, you can't very well paint him. And if you paint him first, then you can't paint the interior either. So the option I decided to go for was to leave the front panel off, paint the inside, paint the figure, and paint the front panel separately. And then all those sub-assemblies can be combined at the end. And with that in mind, here are the sub-assemblies which are ready for painting. We've got the main Brenkun carrier itself. We've got the wheel components. We've got that front panel and the kind of uh, bonnet component there, the engine cover, a couple of mud guards, and a few other bits and pieces as well, a few bits of equipment that don't want to be in the main body colour. And there are lots of pieces of equipment and storage and so on that are included with this kit. Here's a sample of them. We've got ammunition boxes, got uh, canteens, rifles and so on. There are three marking options in the box. Interestingly, for the first one, Tamiya recommends XF26, which is a deep green colour. And for the other two, it recommends TS2, which is also a, a dark green colour, but slightly different. I decided to use the AK real colours. I got my hands on these recently, and I've really enjoyed using them. And here is the overall body painted in SCC15 olive drap. 
And that's a colour used by the British late in the Second World War. It's a very nice matte finish as you can tell. Before adding the wheel assemblies to the chassis I painted the rubber in a dark grey. This is from Vallejo Paints because they're nice and easy to brush paint. And the seat cushions were painted in a brown tan kind of colour from Vallejo as well. This large canvas roll which goes on the back of the carrier was base coated in black and then painted with XF49 khaki. And there are some tools on the rear which I painted later as well. For the various storage items, they should all be in green, but I didn't want them to be completely uniform. So you can just about see here that I've used three subtly different shades of green. And I went with the decals that have the white allied star on them. You can see here that the gloss coat I've used has left a bit of a funny texture on the surface. Uh, I'm not quite sure what went wrong there. Still the decals went down nicely with some mark fit. The provided tracks are rubber band, which is pretty standard for Tamiya. They went on very easily and they glue with regular cement. And those were painted a sort of dark metallic black colour. And then I dry brushed on some metallic colour to give the impression of worn highlights. And it's only once the tracks are on that you can add these mud guards at the side. I use the sponge chipping technique with a metallic grey colour on the interior, particularly in the footwells and the seats. and then it's time to add our figures. I haven't shown how I painted these figures because I'm not particularly good at painting them. I'm getting better I think, but I'm still not where I would consider it to be a tutorial. And as a final bit of weathering on the interior, I use some AK streaking grime and cleaned that up with some white spirit. And I applied it to the outside of the vehicle as well, including the storage boxes and ammunition boxes and so on. Opportunity to add some sponge chipping to the storage boxes. The other thing I did, which you can't really see on camera, you can just about see it in this image here, is put a very light dust coat on the bottom half of the vehicle. And to do that, I took some XF57 buff and some XF52 flat earth, mixed it very, very thin, probably about 80% thinners, and then lightly sprayed it over the bottom of the vehicle. And you can just about see that there. You can see it more in the final images as well. And then it was a case of adding the final storage items. Finally, I did want some mud on the vehicle, so I decided to use some AK dry mud splatter effects. I've used these in a few recent videos. This is a fairly thick liquid which you can water down. And I applied it quite heavily behind the wheels and on the front, the back and the underside as well. 
I didn't want super heavy weathering, but I wanted something to show the vehicle had been used. And with that, this quick build of the Universal Carrier was complete, so let's have a look at the final result. So guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that build of the Tamiya Universal Carrier. This was a fun little kit to build, not overly complex, it has quite a low number of parts, but it has a decent amount of challenge in terms of making you think about the build sequence in order to get the best results. With that in mind, I don't think this is a great first kit for anyone, even though it is small, but it is a uh, interesting build for somebody who's maybe built a few previous models. And of course, being such a common vehicle, the Universal Carrier will fit in with a diorama for basically any theatre that the Commonwealth forces were fighting in World War II. I think the only issue I had with this was my own fault, and it was the decals have got a little bit of silvering behind them. Tamiya decals are normally very good, and therefore I will totally blame myself for that mistake. And let me take a moment to say a special thanks to my Patreon supporters, whose names you can see on the screen now. I really do appreciate your support, guys. Thank you very, very much indeed. So thank you everyone for watching. Please do remember to like, subscribe and comment. And I hope to see you in the next video.